What's up, shiny happy people? You guys know that I am a big fan of 10 millimeter, like probably an unhealthy amount, honestly. Come to think of it, saying I'm a big fan of 10 millimeter is like saying that Robert Kraft is a big fan of back rubs. So when TMW Arrow approached me and asked if I wanted to review one of their survival pistols, I was like, down for whatever. Their survival gun concept is available in a variety of calibers and barrel lengths as either a carbine or a pistol. I opted to review the 10.5 inch pistol with brace. It came with an extended handguard with a Picatinny rail on top and a threaded barrel. My initial impression is that it is reasonably simple to operate and there are a minimum of parts. The gun is machined and assembled with care and the finish is well executed. It's compact, reasonably light at 6 pounds, and would easily fit in a backpack, overhead storage bin, or under the seat in front of you. The trigger is light and breaks cleanly, but has a bit of creep and over-travel. It's also a little narrow for my taste. The parts fit tightly, the finish is evenly applied, and there are no tool marks visible on the external parts. Overall, it is a well-executed firearm with simple, elegant design. It has several features that I particularly liked. Yes, it takes Glock mags. It also accepts stocks, buffer tubes, and pistol grips designed for AR-type rifles. The receiver is drilled and tapped at 3, 6, and 9 o'clock to accept accessory rails if you want, but I appreciate the fact that it is smooth from the factory. I'm glad that gun people seem to be over this need to have saw blades mounted every 90 degrees all over the gun, whether you need the rail space or not. The TMW Aero Survival Pistol has a modular design that makes it easy to swap calibers. You can convert to a different caliber simply by changing out only the relevant part. There are four bolt sizes and three trigger housings. The receiver tube is the serialized part. One standard receiver tube can accept different bolts, barrels, and trigger housings. For example, you can go from 10 mm to 45 by just changing the magazine, barrel, and bolt. To go to 9 mm from 10 mm or 45, you would also need the smaller trigger housing to fit the smaller 9, 40 caliber magazine size. 9 mm and 40 use the same trigger housing as do 10 mm and 45 auto. The practical upshot is this gun can be configured for 22 long rifle, 9mm, 357 SIG, 40 Smith & Wesson, 45 Auto, or 10mm, and there are a variety of barrel lengths to choose from in each caliber. But it also has some design choices that seem odd to me. For example, both sides of the receiver are cut for an ejection port, so you can swap the side that cases eject from by removing the extractor and installing it on the opposite side of the bolt. That's fine, but the charging handle is on the right side of the receiver and you can't change that. The magazine release is a button on the left side of the trigger housing. I would have preferred an AR style button activated by the trigger finger on the right hand, or at least a paddle mag release. There is no last round bolt hold open. You can lock the charging handle to the rear by catching it on a notch HK style, but because it's on the right side, it's a bit awkward to operate. In Unicorn and Fairyland, I would have put the charging handle on the left side of the receiver, but at a 45 degree upward cant to make it easier to operate for people of the wrong-handed persuasion. But hey, that's just my opinion and it's worth every cent you paid for it. You want to know how it shoots, right? Well, first off, it's a lot of fun. Shooting is fun and this gun is above average on the fun factor. Being as compact as it is, it has a lot of pointicity. Long guns are levers and this one has a very short moment arm. That makes it snappy to move between targets. Being 10mm, it does have noticeably more recoil than 9mm PCCs. The 10.5 inch barrel gets a bit of extra mojo out of 10mm too. While not quite into intermediate rifle territory, the velocity results were pretty spicy and the performance in ballistic gel was really impressive. This barrel length is a fantastic match for 10mm. While it may not be the primary intended purpose, this would be an excellent choice for hunting or large animal defense. If you are already carrying a Glock 20 for defense, a 10mm carbine that takes Glock magazines makes a lot of sense. Underwood 220 grain hard cast burned in at 1300 feet per second from the 10 inch barrel and Glock 20 magazines give you 15 rounds of those gnarly little bastards. Good luck finding the methed out chupacabra that can take 16 beast mode 10mm rounds. This thing is a survival pistol though. That means it needs to work in less than ideal conditions, so I tossed it in a barrel full of dirt and dragged it around for a while. Initially, it didn't work when I took it out of the barrel because the witness holes on the back of the Glock magazine allowed a ton of dirt to get into the magazine and it wasn't pushing rounds up. They were literally falling out of the magazine. 
You can hardly blame that on the gun, though. After I stripped the rounds and reloaded the dirty magazine, it had only one stoppage. With a separate, clean magazine, the gun ran like a Skynet disposal unit. Obviously, a shit ton of dirt inside the magazine could stop up any gun. If you plan to keep this somewhere that it might get exposed to a lot of dirt, it wouldn't be a bad idea to wrap a bit of tape around the portion of the magazine that extends below the gun. Later, after cleaning and lubing, I took it to a Wednesday night steel match at Cowtown in Peoria, Arizona. It ran fine at first, but then had some feeding problems with Ventura 180 grain JHP. I didn't have any problems with other ammo, though, and that ammo works perfectly in other guns. It's not unheard of for a gun to just flat refuse to play nicely with one type of ammunition or another, and that underscores the importance of testing your carry ammo. At least it's not a 1911 that refuses to cycle any hollow points at all because I'm cold and there are wolves after me. Still, I emailed TNW and told them about the problem. They had me send it back for repair. When it got back, it ran perfectly. What's my bottom line? This gun is fun. For a range toy, it's hard to beat. As a practical matter, it would be handy to have a PCC or big ass pistol with a brace like this in the same caliber as your carry piece if you crashed a bush plane someplace where banjos are playing or if you hike anywhere on planet Earth. And it would be pretty boss for handgun hunting too. But it seems to slightly miss the mark in regard to ergonomics. It's a well put together gun, so if you think it would fit your needs, you should get one. If you like watching this video, Make sure you aren't missing any of our content. YouTube has been suppressing gun channels real hard lately, so support all your favorite gun channels. This isn't a competition, we're all in this together. Another way you can help is to turn your ad blocker off and support the companies that support gun content. One of those companies is Ventura Munitions. They supplied the ammo I used to test this gun, and they make these videos possible. I hope you enjoyed this one. Have a great day.